Known for his trademark glasses and squeaky clean image, Buddy Holly was considered the all-American poster boy of rock and roll. As you're probably aware, his life was tragically cut short in a plane crash on February 3, 1959, a day so impactful it's referred to as the day the music died. But after his death, surprising details surfaced that add new layers to his legacy. Stick around as Facts First presents The Dark Secrets of Buddy Holly came out after his death. Humble Beginnings in Lubbock, Texas Buddy Holly was born Charles Harden Holly on September 7, 1936 in Lubbock, Texas. Born into a musical family, Buddy got an early start in understanding the power of a good tune. His parents, Lawrence and Ella Holly, had no clue that their fourth child would one day change the face of American music. Buddy's father worked as a tailor and his mother was a stay-at-home mom. The family loved to get together for jam sessions where Buddy's two older brothers taught him the basics of the guitar. By the time Buddy entered high school, he was smitten with music. Rock and roll was just beginning to make its presence felt, and young Buddy couldn't get enough. He was particularly fond of Elvis Presley. He decided early on music wasn't just a hobby, it was his life. He teamed up with childhood friend Bob Montgomery, and the duo began performing at local events, gaining a reputation as Buddy and Bob. Early Struggles and Small Triumphs After a brief stint with a bluegrass outfit, Buddy began to experiment with his own sound. His early recordings didn't make much noise, and Buddy found himself yearning for a break. That break came when a talent scout from Decca Records offered him a contract, but the journey was far from smooth. After a series of recording sessions that led to unremarkable results, Decca chose not to renew his contract. Disappointed but not defeated, Buddy returned to Lubbock where he formed a new band, the Crickets. It was with this group that Buddy finally struck gold. The Crickets' unique blend of rock and roll with a country twang resonated with the public. Their first major hit, That'll Be The Day, catapulted Buddy and his band to national fame. The song was inspired by a phrase from the John Wayne movie, The Searchers, and it didn't take long for it to top the charts. The Highs of Stardom once That'll Be The Day took off, there was no looking back. More hits followed, including Peggy Sue and Oh Boy. The band appeared on major national TV shows like The Ed Sullivan Show and American Bandstand, cementing their place in the rock and roll spotlight. Their sound, defined by Buddy's distinctive vocal style and his unique approach to the guitar, had fans lining up in droves. Buddy Holly and the Crickets went on to release more than just chart toppers. They created timeless classics. Songs like Rave On and Maybe Baby became anthems for the emerging youth culture. Their music combined elements of rock, rhythm and blues, and country in a way that hadn't been heard before. But what really set Buddy apart was his songwriting skill. Unlike many of his contemporaries, Buddy wrote most of his own songs, creating a legacy of original hits that would endure for decades. A love story cut short. Love knocked on Buddy's door in the form of Maria Elena Santiago. The pair met at a music publishing company where Maria worked, and it was love at first sight. They married just two months after meeting. But tragedy struck soon after their wedding when Maria Elena miscarried, due in part to the stress and shock following Buddy's untimely death. On February 3, 1959, Buddy Holly's life came to an abrupt and tragic end, forever changing the landscape of rock and roll. Buddy, Richie Valens, and J.P. the Big Bopper Richardson were part of the Winter Dance Party Tour that was zigzagging through the Midwest. The grueling road trip was taking a toll on everyone. The tour bus had no proper heating, and one of the tour members had already suffered from frostbite. Fed up with uncomfortable bus rides, Buddy decided to charter a plane to get to the next stop, Moorhead, Minnesota. Even the choice of who would be on the plane came down to a twist of fate. Originally, Buddy's band member, Waylon Jennings, had a seat, but he gave it up for J.P. Richardson, who was sick with the flu. Richie Valens, who had never flown on a small plane before, was both excited and anxious about the experience. Famously, he won his seat in a coin toss against Tommy Alsop, another band member. Pilot Roger Peterson, who was 21, was eager but not well equipped for the weather conditions that night. The flight took off from Mason City, Iowa, and was expected to be a quick one. But soon after takeoff, the plane spiraled out of control and crashed into a cornfield, killing all on board instantly. The wreckage wasn't found until the next morning, covered in a blanket of snow. It was an event so shocking that singer Don McLean later dubbed it The Day the Music Died in his iconic song American Pie, a term that has since been universally adopted to describe the tragedy.
An aviation accident report cited a combination of poor weather conditions and pilot error as the cause. So many what-ifs hang in the air when recounting that night. What if Waylon Jennings hadn't given up his seat? What if the coin had landed the other way for Richie Valance? What if they'd waited one more day? These questions remind us of how fragile life can be and how quickly fate can change. In one chilling moment, the world lost three brilliant musicians. Unraveling the Unknown Buddy Holly wasn't just the guy with catchy tunes and geek-chic glasses. He was a complex individual with a fiercely independent spirit. Most fans associate Buddy with his clean-cut image, but few know about his rebellious streak. In a time when artists often had little control over their music, Buddy took the reins. He wasn't afraid to fight for his artistic freedom, even breaking ties with Decca Records over creative differences. He went on to become one of the first musicians to write, produce, and perform his own songs, paving the way for future artists to take control of their careers. He also had a penchant for unusual instruments. Though best known for his work on the guitar, he had a deep love Love for unconventional sounds. His recording of Every Day featured a Celeste, a rare keyboard instrument that most people had never even heard of at the time. This wasn't a one-off experiment either. It was a reflection of his constant urge to innovate and push musical boundaries. Now let's delve into something really mysterious, the saga of Buddy Holly's iconic glasses. After his death, his glasses disappeared, seemingly lost to history. Remarkably, they resurfaced over 20 years later, hidden in a courthouse storage box. But finding them was just the start of another conflict. Maria, Buddy's widow, and Buddy's parents became embroiled in a legal tug of war over who should rightfully own these emblematic frames. The glasses finally found their way to Maria, who then donated them to the Buddy Holly Center in Lubbock, Texas, where they're displayed as a tribute to his enduring legacy. Buddy's family life was a complex tapestry of highs and lows. His relationship with his brothers was rocky, fueled by professional rivalry and personal disagreements that were never fully resolved. As a child, Buddy was a gifted student, but also a bit of a troublemaker, often performing pranks that irritated his teachers but delighted his classmates. And many are not aware of Buddy's interest in mysticism. He was known to have a collection of books about paranormal phenomena and had once consulted a fortune teller about his career who ominously warned him to be cautious of his future. He laughed it off at the time, but the grim prediction seems chillingly prophetic in hindsight. Buddy's music echoes on. Even after his death, Buddy Holly's influence on music has been vast. He inspired a range of musicians, from the Beatles to Bruce Springsteen, and he was among the first group of inductees to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. Now it's time to hear from you. Which of these facts about Buddy Holly surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments section below.